So we should get used to significantly higher inflation for the next several years than we have had in the Western world for the last 40. And it's going to last at least six years, maybe as many as eight. And that assumes we get started pretty soon. Did you know that historically, during inflation spikes, a select group of investors not only survived but thrived? It might seem counterintuitive, but inflation, often dubbed the silent wealth killer, can be an investor's best friend if played right. In a world of volatile markets and unpredictable economic shifts, making sense of financial currents is like reading tea leaves. But amidst the chaos, some voices cut through the noise, providing insights worth their weight in gold. One such voice? Peter Zihan. So, are you ready to rewrite your financial future, leveraging the hidden opportunities within inflation's tides? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to After the 925. This channel is all about helping you break free from the 9 to 5 rat race and live your best life. We are here to empower you to take control of your financial future through smart investments, profitable side hustles, and money management strategies that work. So, if you're ready to say goodbye to the everyday grind and hello to financial freedom, then hit that subscribe button and join our community today. In today's video, we dive deep into Capitalizing on Inflation, Zehan's Must-Watch Investment Playbook. We'll unveil everything from generational dynamics shaping our economy to strategic moves that can transform inflation threats into gold mines. How is the U.S. economy? Have you ever encountered Peter Zihan in your late-night internet deep dives? Let me spill the beans. Zihan is our go-to guy for geopolitics, making big calls using his signature simplified style. And well, right now, he is buzzing about China. He once said, the real question is whether China can even hold itself together as a country. He's been waving a red flag for over 10 years, warning of its financial downfall. And yeah, he's pretty spot on about specific issues, like how a country's age distribution can seriously mess with its cash flow. But here's the twist. Zehan believes that no matter how many fancy policies or tech innovations a country rolls out, some challenges are too big to tackle. And hold on guys, he's predicting a bit of a stumble for the whole electric vehicle hype and a wild inflation ride. We're talking 9-15% jumps annually for half a decade. But before you go into panic mode, Zihan's got a silver lining. He believes this looming inflation could be our golden ticket with the right moves. Picture revamped supply chains, not in some distant land, but right here. Our neighbors, our friends, are at the heart of it. With the best tech, these chains would be almost superhero level resistant to global chaos. And if Zehan's crystal ball is right, North America is about to have a party. Mexico, Canada, and the US are gearing up for a massive economic boom. We might have five years of prosperity like we've never seen. But there's a but. If we don't get our act together, if we don't ace this game, it's not just about grappling with the same old inflation. Five years down the line, we could be staring at empty pockets. And what comes next? More inflation. Drawing insights from Zehan's analysis, we uncover an evolution in the American political landscape that began in 1989. It's a compelling story of our nation's journey towards embracing more populist leaders, one after the other, reaching a pivotal moment with the election of Joe Biden. But to truly grasp the magnitude of this change, we must journey back to 1945. In the aftermath of World War II, while many nations grappled with devastation, the United States emerged as an undisputed economic behemoth, casting a shadow over the rest of the world. This unparalleled strength enabled America to take on a foundational role, not just leading, but nurturing and reshaping the post-war world. Over the ensuing 75 years, it generously supported and fostered growth in various nations, even those that lacked traditional assets like strategic geography or abundant resources. Among the countries that soared with the support, China emerged as a standout success story, rising to global prominence. By 2001, with George W. Bush at the nation's helm, America stood at a crucial juncture. The objective was clear, foster stronger ties and reconfigure our relations, especially with old adversaries like Russia and China. A prevailing sentiment suggested America had transitioned past the days of the Cold War, and it was high time to draft new rules for a globalized world. A harmonious global unity seemed within grasp. Yet, unforeseen events lay ahead. 
the tragedy of 9-11 drastically recalibrated the nation's focus, resulting in years of introspection and shifting priorities. However, the engines of globalization didn't stall. They accelerated, bringing even the most unlikely nations into the fold and onto the world stage. Today, as the dust settles and new power structures become evident, Zihan poses a pressing question. In this reshaped world, can the United States maintain its pivotal role as the main anchor, aiding and guiding global growth? Or is it on the precipice of a new era where we might unintentionally pave the way for China's unparalleled ascent? From the expansive breadth of the U.S. economic landscape, let's zoom in on one particularly resonant note. The evolving symphony between the U.S. and its southern neighbor, Mexico. U.S. and Mexico the ebb and flow of demography is like a grand orchestra, each generation playing its unique note, ultimately defining the music of our future. So, what tune is America humming to? We've seen the mighty swell of the boomers, the more contained ripple of the Gen Xers, the sweeping wave of millennials, and the tighter cluster of Gen Zs. And though these fluctuations present challenges, they're by no means unconquerable. Turning our eyes southward, Mexico emerges as an impressive demographic force, it outshines giants like India and Indonesia with a youthful, bustling profile. It's a story of growth that few other nations can parallel, including titans like Turkey. Imagine the potential of two such nations, each with its demographic specialty, joining hands. The bonds of trade and friendship, epitomized by the NAFTA agreement, have intertwined the destinies of the US and Mexico. Despite early skepticism about NAFTA, its enduring genius is evident today. Look no further than recent high-profile meetings to see the exciting liveliness of this partnership. And well, the solidarity between President Biden and Mexico's AMLO highlights the deep-rooted commitment between these neighbors. Globally, as we witness tumultuous political landscapes, the bond between the US and Mexico shines as a beacon of hope. It's a testament to what fruitful collaboration can achieve. And while Europe, grappling with its demographic hurdles, is on the cusp of significant change, the U.S. remains poised for a dynamic future. Policies enacted under leaders like Donald Trump have set the stage for a more inclusive, racially harmonious America. As the future unfolds, this cooperative spirit promises to usher in an era of shared prosperity and growth. Zehan offers a compelling view of Europe's demographic canvas. While several European countries grapple with demographic dilemmas, France emerges as a shining outlier. Its population structure? Surprisingly similar to the U.S., it is full of promise and potential. However, Germany paints a different picture. As Zeihan insightfully points out, Germany's demographic clock is winding down, suggesting that those keen on experiencing its rich culture might want to do so sooner rather than later. Switching gears to resources, Zeihan delves into the world of oil and gas. These might seem like revenue streams to many, but Zeihan sees beyond the obvious. He envisions them as powerful levers for expansive development. But with a caveat, nations must sidestep the trap of over-reliance. Yet, roadblocks remain. The absence of densely populated hubs can potentially hinder the growth that comes from economies of scale. Zihan's remedy? Embrace processing. It could be the golden ticket for nations, letting them harness the full potential of their resource wealth. And while the glitz of the global marketplace might seem tempting, Zehan's words carry a note of caution. Dipping one's toes in vast, unfamiliar markets, especially as a minor player, can be treacherous. Bringing it closer to home, Zehan spotlights regions like Texas, attributing to them a role that's nothing short of pivotal. In his view, aligning with or owning a piece of such dynamic hubs can outweigh the challenges they may pose. Then comes the generational dynamics. Zehan, with his uncanny insights, paints a vivid picture of the generations and their dance across time. Zehan's Generational Blueprint Today's budget battles, that's the start of our debate about figuring out not how to pay things with your money, but about how to pay your retirement without your money. Something to look forward to. Which sucks for this next group. Where am I, Gen Y? Or excuse me, Gen X, Gen X. Oh, we're all here. Yeah, we're the smallest generation as a percentage of the population. So very soon it will be up to us, all 11 of us, <laughs> to pay for 75 million retiring boomers. 
taxes are going to be awful. But it's not quite as bad as it seems. Because while the boomers are so convinced that they're so special, there's actually a boomer class globally that relative to the population is about 20% larger than it is here. So yes, we do have a boomer donkulous tax bill just around the corner, but it's actually considerably less than what everyone else is going to have to pay. So, you know, not exactly hope, but you know, shocked and Freud. And, and then there's Gen Y. Gen Y folks, you know, the millennials. Uh, a few of you showed up tonight, that's great. Your age group does the consuming. Kids, houses, cars, pot. It's spend, spend, spend. Your purchases, especially the pot, by the way, are why the economy is doing so well right now. Because of you, because of your bulk, the United States is going to be the youngest developing, or excuse me, developed country in the world in just four years, younger than China. And in 15 years when you have matured, and I use that term in the loosest possible way, you will swarm into the tax-paying class with a fervor that Gen X just could have never matched. And Gen X will be settling, settling into the TARDIS-like space that the boomers will be vacating. And America's 20-year effort to digest the boomer demography will finally be over. Now, as an Xer, it really pains me to say this, but you Gen Yers are special because there are no German Ys, or Japanese Ys, or Italian or Canadian Ys. It's as if the entire developed world forgot how to have kids around 1975. And I think we've all traveled enough to know they got the basics down. <laughs> this combination, a bigger global boomer cadre, but no global Y cadre, spells disaster. Consumer activity and tax income will shrink every single year. Retiree costs will increase every single year. It's a deflationary spiral with no escape, and it will happen everywhere but the United States. Zehan offers us a fascinating perspective on the evolving generational saga. Picture our timeline as a colorful mosaic, each generation a distinct tile with its shade and story. While gradually shifting to the backdrop of retirement, the baby boomers cast a long shadow in the political arena. Zehan foresees this group maintaining its influential grip on voting for a considerable time, another 15 years or so. The agenda is simple, to cement their legacy and secure their benefits. Yet, every action has its reaction. Cue the Gen Xers. Numerically smaller but financially mighty, Zehan spotlights an impending shift. The economic hurdles the boomers face, resulting from capital abundance, might just swing in favor of Gen X. For those with an investment lens in this group, the horizon looks promising. But he issues a gentle warning. These windfalls might be eyed enviously by the preceding generation. Now, on to the millennials. Often boxed and stereotyped, they're now seizing their moment under the sun. Delayed beginnings, sure. But now they're shaping the world, building homes, and nurturing the next generation. Zehan celebrates their strengths, their aptitude for teamwork, leadership finesse, and innovative flair. This generation is primed not just to navigate challenges, but to helm them with grace. Then there's the fresh chapter, Gen Z. My concern is with the Zoomers, the younger kids, kids uh, 22 and under. There aren't a lot of them. They're our smallest generation ever. There are about 30% fewer of them than there were millennials at the same age. So a small generation generates a small generation, and they were raised in an era of digitization. An iPad was part of their childhood experience, which means they're a little bit more socially awkward, and they date less, and they are less comfortable around other people. So they are likely to also generate very few children. These individuals are not just millennials 2.0. They've been carved from a different block. Whereas the millennials blossomed under the protective embrace of the boomers, the Zoomers got a reality check early on. Parented by the Gen Xers, they were introduced to the world's intricacies and uncertainties from a tender age. Zehan applauds their grit, their unwavering commitment to goals, and their strong sense of loyalty. They're digital natives, ready to conquer the tech universe. But when looking for the soul of collaboration and interaction, the millennials have that market cornered. His vision on the future is simple. A symphonic merger of Gen X's financial wisdom, Zoomers' tech genius, and Millennials' leadership prowess. 
a trinity bound for triumph. And while other regions might tremble at the prospect of the boomers bowing out, Zaihan sees America's strength. Here, it's not about handing over, but a harmonious handover to the next set of trailblazers. And finally, thanks for tuning in to After the 925. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on financial freedom, smart investments, and profitable side hustles. And as always, don't forget to let us know what you think. As we wrap up, remember that every economic challenge carries the seeds of opportunity, waiting for the right mindset to nurture them. In an ever-shifting financial landscape, will you be the observer, merely watching tides rise and fall, or will you be the trailblazer, harnessing those tides to power your journey? Comment down below. We'd love to know.